Greetings everybody. It's Tuesday, Tuesday evening, eight o'clock. I almost didn't make it. No, I've got three minutes left. I think I'll go back to sleep. No, it was, uh, it was a busy day. I uh, had a lot of housekeeping stuff I had to take care of and I didn't think I was gonna get done in time. I had to take my own passport photograph and they say no selfies are allowed. How do you do it if you, aren't, <laughs> if you can't do it yourself? Anyway. Uh, it didn't look like a selfie, but uh, I needed to get that done. Uh, I see there are lots of messages, and there are some personal messages in there too, but I haven't had a chance to read through them. Um, I'm going to make a couple of brief references uh, before we get started to a, to a couple of folks who may or may not be in the audience. Robert W. Wester, if you're in the audience from Ocala, um, this is a lovely lens you sent me to, to uh, test out and, uh, and see, if, see if it does the, the trick. It's an enlarger lens, it's a 50mm f2.8, but one of the very few that doesn't have a filter thread. There's no way to reverse this lens, not without making something like a scaffolding to put it on. Uh, so, um, yeah, I didn't want to do anything that would mar the surface of the lens uh, with, you know, without your permission. So I haven't been able to test it. I was going to shoot lichens with it today. We're talking about lichens and trees and photography and going outside to look for lichens in the dark, which is hard, um, especially when it's pitch dark. And uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to do last night. I did find some and I made a new friend. Um, I brought a spider home with me who has been with me ever since. Um, yeah, I think he, he wants to eat me, but uh, he's very, very small. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. I am, uh, my levels even look on, a little on the high side. Sound is good, pick is good too. Okay, fantastic. The, um, yeah, I don't, know, um, I don't know how I managed to get these wireless microphones to work, but they do, so I'm just gonna stick with them. I haven't been able to replace the uh, microphone uh, I dropped. Uh, yeah, it's a money thing and a time thing. They're, they're both uh, equally uh, conspiring against me. A uh, couple of quick announcements. Um, the first, uh, there is no Pazoom this weekend. I say that with glee every Tuesday that there isn't one, not because I don't love Pazoom, but because I love having a Saturday where I think I may have lots of time to get stuff done. I never do, but I think that going into the weekend and that, that buoys my heart. Okay, so um, let me see. Got a very special interview coming up. Mr. Lee of Leowa, the Venus Optics in Hong Kong, has graciously uh, agreed to, to meet with me. Now, it's gonna be one of those meeting, have you ever been on a blind date? It's, I imagine it's something like that, except I won't actually get to meet him or talk to him. Um, we're doing this in a strange way, but don't worry about that. It does give us time to, uh, to fine tune some questions. Now I've put together a list of a dozen or so questions that I want answers to. And I think anybody who is into macro would want answers to, but what I wanted to do was give you an opportunity to ask me a question for Mr. Lee. And I will incorporate that into my discussion with him and you'll get your answer when we meet at the beginning of October. No, 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 no. That's already happened. <laughs> the beginning of next year is what I meant to say. That's when we're meeting. We're going to, to kick off the new year with this meeting. And he sounds very eager and enthusiastic to, uh, to do it. I sent him a list of questions and he sent me back a list of questions. And I had to tell him that I was interviewing him. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. So I'm very much looking forward to that. This man, if, if you've ever been to the Leo or website and look at their lineup of lenses, look at their Argus lenses, their Cine lenses, their macro lenses, their landscape lenses, pages of them, he designed all those lenses. That's, that's not something that you just, you know, do over breakfast, but uh, yeah, I guess he does. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to have an interesting conversation. We'll be talking all about Oregon and cine lenses and cine macro, which brings me to the next point, um, which I'm going to skip over because there's one more important point, and then I'll come back to the other one. 
Do you know that the smoke and steam competition is over in three and a half hours and you haven't submitted a picture yet? Which means the only person who did submit a picture is going to win in a landslide. That's terrible. Even I might submit a picture if, uh, if we don't get some last minute uh, kicking in of pictures. If you have a picture that you want to submit, you can send it to me through the Messenger app. I will check the Messenger app on my Walls app thing. Go to Walls app, just drop it as an attachment to me and I'll get it. The alternatively, go to last month's competition and put it there. I know the difference between smoke and flowers. If I can't tell the difference, your picture wouldn't have won anyway, so don't worry about it. But put them in the other, I'll sort through them and I will get them from there. I'll get them from almost anywhere you sent them. If you emailed one to me, I will find it because I'll search my email for competition uh, keywords. And uh, about the only way I won't get it is if you sent it to your Aunt Millicent, Millicent in uh, Des Moines, I'll never see it. I'll never see it at all because she won't send it to me. She doesn't know who I am. You, you just have, will have lost the competition. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's important. Now, uh, I haven't even thought about what we're doing for next month. So if anybody has a, a good idea, tell me about it. And, uh, yeah, we, we'll do it. Uh, so uh, this is your one opportunity to, to direct fate here. Tell me what you want the competition to be about. And um, uh, those results will come to me through uh, Bud or Alistair or Amy, all of whom are here, the three best uh, moderators uh, on the planet. The quick audience participation thing. Alistair, I should have told you about this before we started, but I didn't have time. So here's what it is. I'm going to ask a, a single question and I want a yes or no answer. If you wouldn't mind just adding up the yeses and the noes, and tell me yes or no at the end. I won't know what you're talking about, but we've got to do something. So when I was talking to Mr. Lee, uh, he asked me a, a couple of questions and it, it became apparent that they are interested in uh, getting more interest in the macro video uh, aspect of things. They have a brand new 100 millimeter T 2.9 um, video uh, cine lens for macro. It's a 2x macro lens for cine. Who ever heard of such a thing? It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, there is a, a, a video on their website showing the thing in use and the images are quite stunning and I thought oh my goodness I would love to get my hands on one of those because the footage is just fantastic. Uh, so I thought, well, th the only way we could do that would be if there would be enough interest from, from you guys in learning a little bit about how to do macro video. We just don't talk about it. We do it with our phones and that's about it. But we, we never really get into it. The reason you can't really do video with a camera lens is because of the clicky aperture. You can't adjust the aperture on the fly without it being obvious. And uh, you don't have a long enough focus throw. With a macro lens, it's bam, and you've just gone right the way through the subject. So you need something with a big, long throw so that you can gradually creep up on focus. And that's what this lens does. It's got the mechanics of a, a, a movie lens, but the, the looks and feel of a macro lens. Anyway, I thought it would be fun. The, uh, the question is this. If I do, say, a month-long video macro special where we talk about it maybe once a week. We'll do a live stream or a video or, or maybe both at the end. And I'll cover everything you need to know about how to shoot video, how to deal with the files, how to edit the video, how to get your clips together and what to do with them, that type of thing. It should be fascinating and it's something we don't talk about. If that is interesting to you, just say yes. If it's something that you will leave the channel because of, just say no in the words of Nancy Reagan. Just say no. Uh, and, uh, and I'll know. If everybody says no, we're not interested, then I'll just have to politely demur. But anyway, it should be a lot of fun. And go look at that video over on their, on their website. So um, let me see. What are we going to talk about today? We're talking about the, the aliens that live in trees. And 
I was going to talk about all the things that I see on the tree limbs that fall in my garden. Uh, and then it occurred to me that they're all the same thing. So what we're actually talking about for the, for the rest of the afternoon, evening, is lichens. Now, I did a lot of photography in the last 24 hours. And unfortunately, because of, of, of things like um, uh, schedules and, and uh, conflicts, I've done all the photography, but I haven't got the pictures ready. Uh, I have a batch from last night, but the ones I did today were, were to kind of demonstrate a few of the, the photographic tricks that I use when I'm dealing with super complex, very small subjects, which is what we're talking about today. So I thought what I'd do is just kind of give you a little bit of background on the subject that we're shooting in case you're unfamiliar with it. You shouldn't be unfamiliar with it because they're everywhere. And then we'll go over to the microscope and I am going to do a demonstration of something. Oh, I think I'll do, a, yeah, I'll, it's a surprise for right now. It's a demonstration of something I discovered last night quite by accident and it'll be fun. So we'll go over and do that. And then I'll show you how I prepare some of these specimens for photography. Uh, we can do all of that under the microscope. And I've also got another camera set up over there so you can see with your eyeballs as well. Uh, so um, the, the, the problem with, with becoming an expert on something over the course of a morning, um, well, and last night too, I had some reading then as well, is that you generally don't know much about it. So uh, about 10% of what I'm going to say is absolutely just made up. And I, uh, I won't tell you which 10% it is. It, it'll just be mixed in there. It'll sound believable. And you'll probably quote it at a cocktail party, but you'll be wrong. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. that. That was a joke. That was a joke. That, that's not at all the way, uh, the way I roll. Okay, so uh, to tell you everything I know about lichen would take... Yeah, well, about that long. Yeah, it's, it's a saprophyte. Did you know that? Lichens are not actually creatures themselves. Nope, they're not. They're a, they're a mixture of creatures that inhabit the same space. That's what a saprophyte is. They, they benefit from one another's presence. They don't kill each other. That's what a parasite is. They just live in the same space and use one another's this is going to sound pretty rough, but use one another's byproducts as, as a source of food and energy. Now, in the case of lichens, it's, it's almost always a couple of fungal species mixed in with a, an algae, usually a blue-green algae. And uh, they're, they're in very close, um, uh, the, their life cycles even kind of uh, merge a little bit. The, the, um, uh, the, the way they get on together is the algae are making, uh, the, are making nutrients from the sun. Photosynthesis, right? That, that's their thing. That's what plants do. And the fungus, which is in, it, in turn giving shelter, uh, hydration, um, support, not, not financial support, you understand. Mushrooms are very tight with their money. But they're, um, uh, they're, they're, they're protecting the, the delicate algae which are producing the food uh, from the sun. There's a couple of misconceptions about the things. Uh, they are everywhere. Uh, and a lot of people think that they do uh, mean stuff like kill trees and eat gravestones. They don't do either of those things. Uh, they, uh, they like to live on dead trees for one reason and one reason only. And that is that's where the sun is. If they end up on a live tree, they generally don't get enough sun. The leaf canopy covers the sun. They don't grow. Uh, you see, they have to have sun because otherwise the, the, um, the algae can't photosynthesize. They don't create nutrients for the, for the fungus to live off, <coughs> live off. So they prefer to be in trees that are dying uh, or at, the, at the, the end of their life, which is the same as dying, I suppose. But if you have a tree that is, is almost dead and it doesn't have any leaves on top, that thing will get covered in lichen. And when it does, 
it can get kind of heavy uh, at the branches and that's why they come crashing down in my garden all of them do there are a thousand different varieties of lichen in alabama and uh, i know that to be a fact because there are a thousand in my garden because i added them up they're they are plentiful and they are varied as all get out there are a few minor exceptions to the rule, like there are some, there, there are some that are a little bit on the parasitic side to, to certain flowers like magnolias and rhododendrons. I wouldn't know one of those if you slapped me up the side of the head with it. One thing I noticed about them, though, that is really strange to me is that there's very little life on them. Uh, I'm used to looking under the microscope at stuff with slime molds. Uh, where it's wet and, and nasty and it's just crawling with life. Worms and, and beetles and, and just everything is, is going uh, every which way. This stuff seems almost desolate. And every now and again something will pop along like this spider did last night. And uh, it, it just underscores um, how uh, delicate the balance is. Of course, it's quite possible that when they're up in the tree... They're full of spiders and mites and all kinds of other things, aphids. It's just after it fell 80 feet, maybe those things got knocked off. That's, that's possible too. Who knows? So I realized last night that uh, late, uh, about midnight, that I hadn't prepared for this. Uh, I'd been busy with videos and things. So I decided, well, I have to first get some lichen. And I know where that is. It's in the back garden. So I grabbed a flashlight and went out in the back garden and was picking up sticks at night. And my neighbors already think I'm a bit batty because of the flashes coming from the house at all hours, but this just really did the trick because I had a bundle of uh, sticks under my arm and uh, headed back into the house with a flashlight. So uh, I got so many good, good lichens though. I, the trees I have out here are all dying because they're on my property. And so there's no leaves at the top of them and they're just full of, uh, full of these lichens. And some of them are so full of lichens that you can hardly tell there's a branch under there. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures as we talk because otherwise you're just going to be looking at my face. And I actually do have some pictures to show you. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to move some of this other stuff out of the way. You understand, and you know that I can't do this ahead of time. I, well, maybe I can, but I, I didn't. Actually, I can't, because then I couldn't see any of this. So just, just chat amongst yourselves. I'm not looking at the chat, by the way, uh, moderators, so don't, don't get terse with me. All right, let me see if I can remember where I put the pictures. Where would you put them? In Lightroom in a collection and there they are how about no that that that's not lichens uh continue to chat amongst yourselves i figure out what i've done here they are okay good so i am going to show you some of the lichens that i found last night and tell you a couple of things about them so let me share my screen hang on a sec I know that this is not as slick as you would like, but if I don't get this thing all the way stretched out, it won't do it properly when I start sharing. Okie doke, good, that was easier than I thought. So this is one of the, the fellows that I found last night, and it's very characteristic of, of uh, 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 two of the forms of lichen that I find around here. Uh, and there are so many different forms. I'm going to show you some in real life as well as, as some pictures of them. But this is one that, that I love. I call it the Dr. Zeus uh, uh, lichen uh, because I have no idea what they're called. I, I gave up trying to, first of all, identify them and then remember the names like within two minutes of looking up the first name because they don't make any sense. There are three basic kinds. Uh, there's a, a, a kind called crustose, and crustose lichens are the ones that form flat patches uh, on, on rocks, on tree uh, stumps, on uh, uh, buildings. Anywhere you see a patch of lichen, that's a crustose lichen, and they're, they're all over these tree limbs. 
Now, uh, a, a more common type on the oak trees that I have in the garden are these, um, they're called, uh, what, folios. Folios, because they're, they're like leaves. And uh, yeah, that's what these bits are. They're, they're flat and they have a front and a back. But these aren't just simple folios uh, lichens. I have those. These are complicated folios lichens because they're actually, um, they're also fruticose, which is the type that has these cup-like fruiting bodies and hairs. It's complicated, so I suggest you don't worry about it. Uh, just know that it probably starts with an F. Um, that there's a two-thirds of a chance that it will, and, uh, and that's good enough. That'll get you p through the final exam. This is just one lovely one that I found. Um, photographing these is a challenge, and we'll talk about that when we're over at the, uh, at the microscope, but I'll show you a few examples anyway. They take almost every form that you can imagine and uh, they, they'll, some of them will go deep into the, into the wood like this, where the wood's uh, rotted, uh, and just show, show, show us little patches on the surface, but they'll be all through the, the, the wood. It's very, very uh, uh, intriguing to see how they completely take over and build a whole ecosystem in a dead branch. And uh, a, a, a one inch section of branch may have 10 different uh, varieties of lichen growing uh, in that same spot. They seem to get on quite well together. Uh, I don't know what that one is either, so I uh, can't help you there. It, something that really amazed me was when I did find creatures, I found views like this, which honestly looked to me like sheep grazing in a field. This is aphids grazing in a, on an oak leaf under the shade of, of um, a couple of bryophytes. It's just uh, bizarre looking. It looks like a, a child's stick drawing of, of a cow, but it's not. It's an aphid. And then right as I was getting into this and enjoying it, I came across a uh, um, ladybird larva that was eating an aphid head first. That put me off completely. Sorry about the garish colors on that. I tried something that didn't work, as you can tell. So let's see what else we've got here. Yeah, so these are the types I was telling you about. Folios, leaf-like. Fruticose, the branching ones. And crustos, the ones like a scab. And, uh, and yeah, they're all right there in the same place, along with a couple of uh, animals I later found in here. The thing is, you can't really, I mean, unless you, unless you are an expert in lichens, like a lichenologist, and there are only, I think, two of them in the world, yeah, there's no way you're ever going to remember what these things are, so I wouldn't bother if I was you. But just enjoy them. Uh, they, they look like, they look like uh, uh, alien planets, is what they look like. I would imagine that the foliage would be like, uh, only, well, you'll see, I'll, I'll show you some close-ups, and you'll really appreciate what I'm talking about. Now, I, I started thinking about uh, how I was photographing these things. Uh, and these are, just, these are just quick snapshots that I took as I collected. Uh, the, the pictures I'll, I'll show later on when they're, they're all processed are much better pictures. But I started thinking about these as landscapes of lichen and then uh, as uh, portraits of lichen, where I'd photograph just a uh, grouping of lichen, not the whole, uh, the whole landscape with all the different um, uh, types represented. And then I would photograph details, interesting details or parts of details. And as I got even closer in with a microscope objective, I found I was photographing sections of parts which started to take on the, the feeling of some very strange abstract stuff. And that is, that is really the way uh, the, the, the photography has to be approached. You have to look at the subject. You, you can't do this without a microscope or a, a very powerful magnifying glass because you've got to look at it from every angle. You've got to be ready to, to trim back some of the uh, material to expose what you want to show 
and then uh, ever so carefully uh, get the get the shot set up. It is a lot harder than than you would think. None of these have been prepped. These are just that they're actually sticking on the end of a spike out in my garden and I took the pictures last night in the pitch dark. So these have not been cleaned up. Uh, that appears to be the same picture. That's interesting, two for one. Now, as you get in closer, you start to see that some of those fruticose um, uh, lichens that have the, the branches and the, the flower-like things at the end, which I think are fungal, don't know that for a fact, can coexist right next to a completely different kind of lichen and inter intertwined with them. And then there'll be a big blob of some orange lichen right next to it. That, and that's the surprise I was going to tell you about. It was a surprise to me anyway. I, um, I was photographing stuff last night and I remembered that Julie said um, at the Pazoom meeting the other day, don't forget to shine a UV light on it. And I couldn't remember if she was talking about lichens or something else so, so I did I shone a light on it and uh, a bunch of it lights up now uh, there are uh, red uh, fluorophores in these lichens and blue fluorophores if you've never seen blue fluorescence coming from a green plant it's pretty spacey we'll go over and look at it in just a second it reminded me we have a cave near here well, it's not near here. I used to live near it. And it's, it's called the Dismal's Canyon, which is not a promising name for a cave, is it? And the walls of those caves are lined with, uh, with these worms that, um, yeah, they glow in the dark. They're, they glow blue. They're the only blue worms in America. And they're the only glowy blue worms except in Australia and New Zealand in the whole world. And they are the brightest fluorescent blue worms anywhere. How about that? And they live in a place called the Dismal's Canyon. And you know what they're called? Dismalites. That's the name of the, the worm. Yeah, that's what I thought of when I looked at these things under the microscope with fluorescent light because they looked a lot like uh, the, the Dismalites did. Which sounds, well, yeah, okay, that, that, was, uh, that was probably more information than you needed. You know who used to go to the Dismal's Canyon all the time uh, because he was robbing banks all the time? Jesse James, that's where he used to hide. And all the times I went down there, I never met him, not once, so I'm not sure I believe the story. But uh, yeah, that that's, was his hiding place. This is an example of a layout that I would probably shoot as a landscape. And I would shoot it just like a landscape. I mean, I would back off, I would try to get the, the angle that, that was most pleasing, and I'd try to incorporate all of this, but showing each feature to its, to its greatest um, uh, effect. I would also focus stack this, of course, because I'd be doing this uh, landscape with a macro lens. Uh, so I just love the combinations, but it gets much more um, interesting as you get closer in. Now, when I was doing this, a spider uh, jumped out as I was cleaning this thing up. I think I exported two of everything just to be on the safe side. Uh, lovely uh, uh, folios, no, uh, yeah, folios um, edges of these uh, these lichens with the fantastic hairs coming out of them. They're really not hairs, they're more like branches. But as I was doing this, a, a tiny, tiny jumping spider, uh, Salty, jumped out and scampered around the table, grabbed something to eat, and then ran back and jumped back into the lichen. And when they get back in the lichen, they are hard to find. So I kept thinking he'd gone, uh, gone home, somehow got out and gone away, and he'd show up again. Uh, and this went on for hours. I've got one particular picture to show you which just had me rolling in the aisles. It was so funny. Uh, this is a completely different kind of uh, lichen pattern and I'm not sure if, if this even is lichen. It's underneath the bark. Uh, it looks like it's been excavated by something that's been crawling around. I don't know what this is, honestly. Uh, it didn't taste very good. And these are lichens for sure, but um, yeah.
that's the that's the problem you see i don't know what any of the things are called they're um I will learn, though, because these are very, very interesting um, creatures or combinations of creatures. Some of them also have bacteria in them, uh, cyanobacteria, and they can all three exist, the fungus, the, the uh, cyanobacteria, and the, um, and the uh, algae can all exist at the same time in, in some of these things. They, uh, they're, they're delicate in that they hate uh, pollution, air pollution, it kills them. Uh, so they acid rain, uh, you know, uh, sulfur dioxide, all those things. Just they don't do well with that. So when you see a lot of lichen, it, it's telling you that the the air where you are is in pretty good shape, you know, long term. Um, and like I said, they don't cause disease, even though some of them look like they are actively causing disease, like this. This is a lichen. Um, and as you get in closer, you can see these balls of, of hair, basically. That's the lichen. I don't know what these, uh, these rather frightening looking veiny things are. That's the uh, varicose lichens, I guess. But anyway, that was an interesting one to, to see. Uh, there, were, there were so many, I, I, lost, uh, I lost count. Uh, I really did. And then there are some that are just whoops that, that are just so bizarre looking. Um, these are the Dr. Seuss ones I was talking about. Nothing comes out of these holes, by the way, that I'm aware of. You know how they um, um, how they do sexual reprodu uh, reproduction? They don't. Um, they reproduce by bits falling off them. Yeah, that's the that is the entirety of the event. A piece falls off them and something picks it up and drops it somewhere else and it starts growing. That's how they reproduce. That doesn't sound like reproducing to me, but that's, that's what they, they say they do. Yeah, this one I could see that would be the only way it could reproduce because there's no other, even another green thing with these siphons on it is gonna make the move on that. I think he's safe. So let's see. What is this, I wonder? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this was um, I was looking at the edge of a twig, and I, I saw that there was a an unusual. Um, this this is apparently not a dead part of the. Uh, if you can see my cursor in the middle there, it's not a dead part of the lichen. It's just it, this particular uh, brand of lichen has had one of these arms that's always red. I don't know why. It was right next to a different lichen with the hairy, hairy eyelashes. But as I was looking at this, I, I noticed these two pink uh, uh, fungal plates or whatever they were, and that drew my eye down here. I think that that might be a slime mold going on on the, on the branch. Maybe not. Um, it, it could be just another, another uh, lichen. But I don't know what those things are, and they're not in focus. Unfortunately, they aren't in any other pictures. Pretty amazing, though. Pretty interesting. This is one of those things like the soil mesofauna that you can literally just get lost in the microscope and spend hours and hours looking at them. Look at these tiny little crazy looking mushrooms with branching stems and these, uh, uh, these exploded um, cup things that I don't know what they're for. I ought to have looked that up, but I didn't have time. Uh, let me see, just a couple more. Um, you know what? I didn't show you the, the picture I was so excited to show you. I wonder where it is. I'll have to look for that one. It was my spider uh, uh, sprung a trick on me um, during... Um... No, there he is, yeah. I was just looking at this and getting ready to photograph this landscape when I saw something move down here. This is my spider. He had come back to visit and, and hidden in plain sight right in the middle of this lichen uh, in one of those egg cups. Yeah, he was just down in there. You see, he's absolutely tiny. He's out of focus too, but that was, uh, that, yeah, that all these pictures were really. Isn't that something else, that landscape? Amazing. If you've never done this, you need to grab the microscope and uh, go out and find a branch. I'll send you a branch if you don't have one. And uh, yeah, take some pictures. So um, let me see, I think I had one more picture of paper. No, it's my little buddy. That's the only picture I got of him because he, 
the next picture is the same white piece of tissue paper with no spider on it because this guy jumps about three feet at a hop and uh, yeah I couldn't keep up with him so anyway uh, what say you we go over to the microscope and um, uh, and look at some of the, the stuff that I found and see if we can get some stuff to fluoresce does that sound moderately interesting what should we do the microscope or the, I'll tell you what, we'll do the, the phone bit first, because I've got a phone camera set up, and then I'll swing back by here and, and change to the microscope. Okay, good plan. So let's, um, let's go over there to the, yeah. Now, can you still hear me when I'm over here? It looks like you can. My, it, yeah, I'm going to assume that, that you can. So... This is actually the piece that I um, uh, was looking at under the microscope last night. If you're going to do this, it's very, very messy. Uh, just be ready for that. Bits break off and go flying all over the place. Um, and, and this is a very typical uh, dead branch from my garden. There are thousands of them that you'll see some of these um, little cup ones are pink. And um, I don't know if you can properly see them. Let me get another light going. That's another thing I was going to say. You really need... Oh, I know what it was. I was going to get a... Um, I was going to get a, a bendy arm for my, uh, for my light. And then uh, I put it down and didn't pick it back up. Um, no, nope, I can't find the other light either. Well, there you go. We'll just have to make do. Let's try moving this light in. This is, uh, yeah, that's a little better maybe. Can you see? Yeah, I think that looks okay. So these are the, the common ones that I was looking at earlier with you. The big long branching mushroom ones and the, the cup shaped folios ones. But the, the scabby like ones are everywhere. This is one of those. And this is a highly fluorescent one. This is an orange under fluorescent light. I'll show you. Let me. Do, we'll do it first, just with the phone, and then, um, and then I'll try it with the microscope, so you can see it more clearly. So you should be able to see. I'm going to even block the light off more. And let's see if we can get some. Well, it's it's actually there. You can see it. I think it's it's orange to me. I don't know if you can know. The phone's not really showing the color. Maybe the um, microscope will do better, but that's very rich umber. Now, as I go along the, the top of the, the um, lichen, I can see these areas that have blobs of very bright blue. Do you see those up at the top? It, they're around the edges mostly. This is real. These, this is a, a believed to be a um, cyanobacterium in the lichen that's uh, causing this blue coloration. And it's really, really striking. It's very blue, uh, very uh, pale sky blue. Now, this uh, batch over here that I'll show you now, let me turn some light back on. This batch I'm getting ready to show you. I, I have not looked at, uh, I mean, I was photographing it in the back, but I have not looked at it under UV, and I haven't looked at, under the, looked at it under the microscope. I just dropped my other branch, or most of it. So this is, this is what I got, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this in is to, to show you some of the ways that I was preparing this stuff to photograph. I use a little Japanese handsaw which is very sharp and it's very good for, for accurately cutting twigs and what have you. So what I did was I just examine it carefully under the microscope, under a good light and, uh, and go through the parts and see what I want to, to photograph. And one of the first things I found was this. So let's just do show and tell one at a time. This is a twig from the end of an oak branch and this twig it is not very um, uh, rotten yet but you can see how the the um, lichen is growing out from right where the acorns were 
And I thought that this picture would just tell a, a fantastic story. Um, this is exactly how, uh, you know, th this would exist in nature and exactly how you'd see it. So it, um, it, it belies the, the, the old um, adage that these things are somehow killing trees. They're, they're really not. Uh, they're just opportunistic. Then for the, the flat type of uh, lichens, like the, the creamy colored part of this, um, I just um, cut a piece of the bark off. Let's look at these ones under the microscope real quick. So this is the guy that we're looking at right here. And um, the, the surface of these is almost universally weird. Now, my uh, microscope is not um, going to ex exhibit parfocality, I'm afraid, because, uh, because of life. Look at that, that's a weird looking um, configuration of stuff. Let's zoom in a bit closer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know uh, exactly what that is. This is when I wish I had some more light. Uh, oh, I thought that was a dead frog. It was just a piece of green lichen on my desk. It looked like a dead frog. Um, what we'll do is we'll shot. Oh, look at this. I just, this the same piece of bark. And there's a completely different, uh, I think this one's called something like bucket of blood um, or some other unlovely name. Um, Somebody told me what the, those things were called, but uh, they look like cups of uh, raspberry jam. That's a completely different lichen uh, right on the edge of the, of the subject. There's a, a different one too. This one's black. You've got to admit, these are some pretty nifty looking uh, structures under the microscope. Let's see if this one fluoresces. There's no telling when they're going to. Well, there is a, a faint blue uh, fluorescence. It's a lot better when you can get the room pitch dark because some of it's very subtle. Yeah, you, that's definitely fluorescing. Look at that. Yeah, I, I'm liking that. That's... Uh, UV IVF, uh, ultraviolet uh, um, stimulated uh, uh, visible fluorescence, something or other. There you go. Got some of it. I've got another flat piece here, so let me get, get that one next. Can you see the, the, the possibilities here, the, the things that you could do photographically with this stuff? Now, when, when you're talking about photographing a flat lichen on a piece of bark, you're probably going to be limited in just how exciting that, that can be. But with the branching ones and the, and the Dr. Zeus ones, yeah, there's all kinds of things that you could do. I wonder if that fluoresces. I don't think it does. Yeah, that's what a negative one looks like. It just nothing. That's me shining the light directly on it. Though oddly, if you look at it, oh, that's right. Hang on, you're looking at, at it under the through the microscope. Okay, good. Um, if you look at it under the phone, you can see that it actually does light up a different color. Hold on. Well, you maybe can make that out, that there's a little bit of uh, color change, but not much. So that's the other flat piece then. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is fantastic. Um, I am going to, I'm gonna put you back on the other p camera for a second. Alrighty, so I am looking at this little guy, this little twig, 
that I picked up because, um, yeah, I just like the, um, I, I like the look of the little tiny mushroomy things down here. Hang on, let me get a way to get my hand in there properly. Okay, and then I just shone the light on it. How about that? Look at that. That is impressive. That looks like a um, highlighter pen. It's not, I promise. It's, uh, it's a fluorescent lichen. Let's look at it under the microscope. All right, so under the microscope, which has the camera just turned itself off, I think. It'll come back on, it usually does. It might be a bit dark actually. Let me fiddle around with a couple of settings here. Yeah, you need a quite a bit of amplification of the signal to see this stuff. Cause, oh, look at, look at this. How about that? So we've got different species fluorescing in different colors right next to each other. But look at the yellow smiley faces. Isn't that special? I want to get a bit more magnification in a second here. Oh, we've got gold and um, let me back off a bit and see if we can get a better picture of this. Okay, let me regroup here. There we are. Let me get it in focus, there, and then I'll zoom in. Ah, so those are little cups as well. That is beautiful. But the, the blue stuff was further down the... Sorry, this is hard to do. I've got too many, um, too many parts moving at the same time. There we go. Let me find that blue part again. I think it might have been right there. There's blue and orange and red. Wow. That really is pretty impressive. If you have a microscope, you need to go grab some lichens. I hear that the lichens in Arizona are particularly fluorescent. That looks like a hippo. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? And as you go further out, it's, it looks like it's almost all blue out to the, towards the ends. Um, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, I had not seen that. That is incredible. Are, uh, I hope you guys are seeing this. Oh my goodness. That would be, um, hang on. Let me get it lined up again. So we've got the yellow and the, the blue in there, but there was a whole bunch of blue dots on the, there on the stem. Look at that. That is so remarkable. I have no idea what, what is causing that what uh, organism by the way here's a neat trick for oh look at that for these organisms to fluoresce they have to be damp or they have to have moisture if you happen to have uh, a um, a lichen that is trying to fluoresce and it's dry you might not see anything but if you damp it down, just spray it with a water bottle, the fluorescence will turn back on almost instantly, so that you can you can see the the uh, you can see the thing come back online. Look at those colours, boy! That is just amazing. I haven't even begun to look over all of this uh, particular twig. All right, let's see what else we've got. This is turning into a. Um, a fluorescence. Oh, my UV light is getting really hot. It doesn't like to be left on like that. Okay, so for the photography, 
Let's go back to the camera. Got it here somewhere. So when I saw this, I, there was this beautiful piece with, let me see if I can get some light in here. My hand's in the way. There was this beautiful piece of lichen with the, the, the leaf-like uh, folds and trumpets and everything at the top. I thought it would look great. Um, so I cut off just a piece of the branch and also on the back side is a different kind of uh, fruticose uh, lichen. That might even be easier to see. That has uh, a whole bunch of these little cup things all facing in the same direction. So that's what I'll do so that I don't have a whole branch sitting there on my macro stage. I'll just cut a piece off. And that's what I've done. Every time I saw something a little different, like this shaggy fellow, there was a bunch of this stuff. Every foot or so, there was a big shock of this white hair coming out. This is a lichen too. Um, let me look at it under the microscope. It's boring under the microscope though. Oh, we've only got a few minutes left and I do want to show you the rest of these, so I'll speed up. Look at this one. I'm not sure if this is a lichen, but if you look closely, you can see one side of the branch is covered in these hair-like projections. Just that side of the branch and, the, and you can really see the, the texture of them. On the other side, they're just regular lichens. And I bet these things fluoresce too. Let's have a look. Yep, there's, there's another kind, a different kind fluorescing on the back. You know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing this the rest of the night. Look, oh my goodness, look up, look up at this other end. There is a completely different color of orange going on. Again, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is, this is a, a deeper orange uh, on the end and there's a bright yellow on the, the far piece. There's some blue in there. I don't know what that thing is sticking up out of there. It might be a dead animal. But yeah, you can really see the bushiness of that uh, other stuff. That might not be a lichen. While I've got this on, let me just look at the last couple of pieces and see if they've got anything spectacular. I sh yeah, oh my goodness. So here's another, look at this, blue, purple, green, and orange. All on one little, oh my goodness gracious me. That just is awesome. I think we've got to look at that under the scope as well. I'm beginning to think all of this stuff is fluorescent. Orange, blue, let's look at that under the microscope. Oh my, even that shaggy hair that I said was boring, look at that, that's got a, a pale blue to it. All right, let me turn the scope on. I really, really need to blow my nose. You didn't need to hear that, did you? Okay, so under the microscope, the, uh, the yellow, hang on, let me try that again. These things do not lie flat. There we are. So, oh dear, I just nudged it. Let's get the big piece in the picture there. Now let me focus. This is so hard not being able to keep it in focus because it's, it's just hard. Different color on the back, some blues. There you go, look at that spacey blue there. Orange, red. Oh wow. This is like Christmas, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this. I thought I was going to show you that one orange patch that I found last night. And we would just have a, uh, a whole lot to say about that one orange patch. But this whole 
branch is covered in this. All right, just a couple more pieces I'll show you. Let me turn the, uh, you, I don't think you you can see on the, hang on, let me get it centered. I don't think you can see these cups are also fluorescing, but very gently, very uh, subtly, kind of a greenish uh, orange. Uh, they are definitely glowing, but it's it's not super bright. And there's a blue thing right next to it. Look at that blue and yellow together. Look at that. I think I've said look at that quite often in this. There's only two more pieces I want to show you. All right. I hope we've still got a picture. I hope that we've still got an audience. I'm always afraid to do, uh, to do live stream demos because I can't keep up with what's going on out in the world. Okay, so I took this piece and I trimmed it from the, the um, dead limb. Again, because of the fascinating clusters of, of these little mushroom structures. And... Um, it was, there was also something going on at the end. I am not exactly sure what that is. Under the microscope, it's, yeah, those black um, buckets of, uh, of shiny stuff. This one I, I picked up because I was almost certain it would fluoresce. Because everything orange I've seen does. Let's have a quick look. Who's going to go out and get them? No, it doesn't, does it? Who's going to go out and get themselves a UV light tonight and go find lichens in the garden? You really ought to. This is, um, this is as much fun as I've had with uh, an adventure in quite some time. Two more pieces. One of them is just a different kind of fruticose lichen with a very very uh, bushy um, branching um, set of uh, whatever they're called. See how hairy that thing is? And these things are quite brittle, but quite strong too. There's a uh, crustos um, lichen, a different one there. Beautiful. I imagine that, uh, yeah, lovely. Oh, I know, I know why I took this one. It's got a big, a gigantic big um, one of those cups in there somewhere. One last piece, two last pieces it turns out. One is that little cluster of uh, mini mushrooms growing out the side of the bark. And the last one, there's this spectacular arrangement of, I don't know what, I don't even know how I'd describe this thing. Look at it, it's just insane all these different structures and look at this, all this, it's beautiful. I'm gonna photograph this so I don't wanna break it or anything, but let me see if it fluoresces. You'd think it would have to, and it doesn't. In oh yeah, it does. The yellow up at the top there, look at that, just sticking up out of, it's a Nikon yellow at that. Well, let me get back over to this. This is so much fun. Sorry for sniffing then. I, I just couldn't figure out a better time to do it. Um, that was fun. I, I was not, not expecting to see all of that stuff fluorescing in all those different colors. Um, yeah, we, we really did, uh, need to do this again with some other things. I, I've never been that fascinated by glowing rocks, but I could get interested in them, I think, if I found enough of them. But this stuff, you would just not expect it when you go out in the garden and see these dead tree limbs. You don't think they're going to be green and blue and yellow and orange under the microscope. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Well, I have not done any photography with the UV light. I need to. I, I need a better UV light source or a bigger UV light source. One of the tricks you can do, by the way, if you have just a small pen light source, this takes a, an 18650. It's a, it's a big, powerful battery. And this does put out a lot of, oh, it's hot. It puts out a lot of uh, current. And uh, this, 
this is a good good way to do it but you often need to take a white card and bounce some of the the uv back into the other side of the subject or you don't get good coverage so just bear that in mind and and don't do what i just did wear some kind of glasses if you're doing this these glasses have protection from this kind of thing but um yeah goggles would be better because it'll blind you um yeah and my spider didn't show up uh, which was disappointing to me but I, he'll probably come later tonight so uh, so that's it um yeah i i had a good time um i'm gonna read some i'm, I'm gonna read some um uh, messages very quickly uh, while while I'm still here and I'll just keep talking and you guys can go on about your business if you've got uh, places to go. I see Robert is here. Robert, good evening, sir. Um, no, I don't think the, the I don't think the lichens, Robert, have anything to do with the actual alien that I saw in the garden. I think that was just separate. That was a real alien. I'd forgotten all about that. Uh, Info on the UV torch. Yes, the uh, UV torch that I use is called a Jaxman. I'll put a link in the um, in the notes in about five minutes. As soon as I get off here, I'll, I'll put a link. These are hard to find, and you have to have these uh, or one uh, like this because it has a, uh, a UV LED made by Nietzsche, um, a Japanese company. They make by far the best um, uh, UV light sources or energy sources. They put out a, a fairly high energy, pure UV light with almost no light light. When it's turned on, you can hardly see that it's on unless it hits something that fluoresces. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a good one um, and that's what you want. You don't want one of the cheap ones that, that basically just shines purple light. That's not going to fluoresce anything. Uh, so um, that was, I'll, I'll give you, um, and you, you did see it. I'm so glad that you did. Good, fantastic. Yeah, I know, um, I know that I have to turn out more lights, but there are a lot of lights in this room. And if I turned them all out, you wouldn't see anything ever again. It would be black. So there you go. My voice is ahead of the video when you're uh, sharing the screen. Hmm, weird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds te like a technical problem. Um, but um, yeah. What magnification were they shot at? Um, let me see. Proud liberal, I like that idea. Uh, that, that might be a, a, a good one to go with. Let me think about it. Um, what magnification were what shot at? The pictures that I showed at the beginning, they were all shot at one-to-one. -one. They were all shot with a macro lens. Um, the ones I'm doing now are being shot with an enlarger lens. They're a bit tighter. And then later on, I've got some that, that are going to be um, very high magnification ones. So they'll be all over the, all over the, the place. Monthly contest suggestion. Item found in your pocket or purse. Something you always carry with you. I like that idea, um, except somebody's going to have like a nuclear reactor or, or something in their pocket, and we'll know they don't always carry that one. How's my knee? Uh, my knee is, is a hideous mess, and I would show it to you, but the, the faint of heart would, would just faint. It, it, I fell over um, in my workshop uh, on Tuesday night and landed on my knee. I think it was Tuesday night, my bad knee, and it swelled up the size of a cantaloupe. And uh, it's, it, the swelling's largely gone down, but there's a big open wound where uh, it all got scraped off. Very sore, but it's better now, better now. Yeah, I was protecting the wood I was carrying so that the wood wouldn't get damaged on the concrete floor. I threw my body between it and the wood and the floor. Yeah, that was smart. Okay, let me see. Thanks for asking about the knee, everybody. That was good. Uh, reading these backwards is um, is difficult. Oh, John Wyndham wrote a good book about them. About what? Oh, the lichens? Yeah. Hmm. 
Joseph says arm length pictures are no good, but tripod selfie is okay. That's what that's what I figured out. I did it uh, both ways, and with the arm, you can't help but see it. I I had a stick I could have used, but there you go. All right, it is uh, late, and uh, I see there wasn't a whole lot of back and forth chatter. Uh, did we have any people show up tonight? That that would always um, I haven't I haven't looked at the. Uh, at the YouTube thing in the jig. Let me see. There it is. Oh my goodness! There was a lot of there was a lot of chatter back and forth. That's great. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, there's a lot of cool stuff in here um, to uh, to to for me to talk about. You guys did have. Uh, yeah, I should see a surgeon about my knee. I did. It was a, a surgeon was right there with me as uh, as I broke it. So, um, yeah, um, a woods light is the way to go. If you, if you really want um, a very high energy UV light, the uh, UVA, I guess, um, or, yeah, or is it C? I can't remember. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a woods lamp uh, is a good source. That doesn't put out hardly any light at all, just UV. But they're expensive. And uh, is Bruce here? I didn't, I didn't see um, and um, Laura's here, and Bruce was here. Bruce, I'm, I haven't talked to you in a long time. I'm glad to see you here, sir. Andrew was here. Angie was here. Angie, how are you doing? Oh, you're cl this is that one week of the year where the clocks do the funny thing where they're only five hours apart between uh, Newcastle and Alabama, and then it'll go to six hours again next weekend, I think, or when ours change. So, lots of arthropods show uh, fluorescence, says Jack. Um, you know, I don't see many fluorescent insects. Um, I, I know that uh, scorpions certainly do and uh, related, but I don't see many insects that, that, are, uh, that, that, res that uh, glow with uh, UV. I'd be interested to do more, though. I was in the middle of doing that and got distracted a few months ago. I need to pick it up again. Um, Jack uh, also says the Adaptalux macro lighting system, LED flash and UV modules would be a great review subject. It would. Um, it would. I have been meaning to try that since they added flash, um, but I haven't. Not yet. All right. Guys, I'm going to go. Uh, I've got a lot, to, a lot to do tonight. And um, yeah, thanks very much for coming. It, it, was, uh, it was good fun. We'll do it again. And uh, this week on Thursday... We're going to be talking about diffusion, and I'm going to be dispelling a few myths there as well. Uh, we're going to talk about what is and what is not important in macro when you're diffusing light. And I see most people doing it wrong, I'll be honest. So I'm going to tell you what I do and what I think we should do uh, to get the best possible light on our subject. And then I'm going to introduce you to my latest invention, which I only invented, well, I'm still inventing it, because every time I draw it, it changes. But uh, yeah, I'll have that ready for you to examine on Thursday, and you will want one. I guarantee you will want one, because it's special. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming, but especially thank you to my uh, moderators, uh, uh, Bud, Alistair, Amy, thank you so much for everything you do. Um, couldn't do this without you. Literally couldn't do it without you now. This is, uh, this is perfect. Take care. Stay safe. Be well. I'll catch up with everybody on Thursday. Adios.